Welcome back to Dark Souls 2. So here we are back in Hades Tower of Flame. We just got here. And first thing you want to do is kill this guy. Do not be imitated by, uh, intimidated, I mean, by these guys. Actually not all that hard at all. Uh, then uh, there goes Hades Tower of Flame there. And we've got a castle kind of looking like thing over there. If you have played Dark Souls 1, this area does remind you quite a, a lot of another area, which is uh, An Orlando. We've got a bonfire down here, which will light this. Actually not going to rest, just because we just got here. Don't need to repair anything just yet. You do not... A thing you do not have to rest at a bonfire to uh, to have to spawn there. If uh, as long as you light it, it it set my spawn to that bonfire. So this guy is the most important guy to kill uh, in this area because this guy does drop. Ouch! All right, so he does drop a very important item, which is sublime bone dust. So what that bone dust does is um, <clears throat> so the name is soldier and human FG. All right, so what that bone dust does is um, <clears throat> it powers up your S's it'll make it plus one and plus two and plus three and so on like that so it'll make it heal more than a normal S's flask would so killing this guy Lloyd's talisman killing that guy will uh, unlock this lift and you can see uh, I'm gonna show you guys here you can actually see our bow. That'll make us exactly 70. Alright, that's fine. You can actually see the boss over there. That is Dragon Rider. Uh, you can attack him from here with long uh, with range uh, and stuff like that, but it does take quite a while. Uh, you can't actually see his health, but I did hear it takes about like 85 to 100 arrows uh, to lower his health all the way to zero but he will not will not die unless you enter the room and get one more hit on him but you do notice that he is on a very small platform but using these levers it will lift the uh, a platform there and that is not the last platform that you uh, can lift to fight him there's another platform he is still on quite a small platform so the whole purpose of doing that is so that he can just knock you off and uh, and kill you that way. All right. So the key to killing these guys is take them out one on one. Don't let them all attack you at the same time. I like running over here because that guy will uh, get pulled back. The guy on the left. One more guy here. Remember, do not be intimidated by these guys just because they're giants. I know the first time I came through here, I, I felt a little bit intimidated just because, you know, if you've played Dark Souls 1, these giants are quite hard in, in Orlando. But after you kill those three guys, the second lever comes up. And this lever lifts the last, uh, the last platform over there. So that boss is not hard at all as long as you can uh, lift these levers but before we go and face that boss there's another path over here ouch Alright, take those guys out and you've got an item here, Divine Blessing. And we can come on up here. And kill this guy. You might think this area up here is a dead end, but it 
It is not. Uh, you have to kill this guy. And it'll open up this lever. Which lowers this bridge here. And then we could come on up here. Get the chest here at the Cathedral of Blue. Ring of Binding and Human FG. Old Radiant Life Gem. So the Ring of Binding is actually pretty good. If you like staying hollow, uh, limit HP reduction when hollow. It does lower the amount taken away from you if you do die as a hollow. Uh, and it does also restore a little bit of health. Um, that it does restore that little bit of health that when you die, uh, you lose that little bit of health. It restores that just for the moment, from the last time that you died. It's basically what it is, but it's actually pretty good if you like staying hollow. So we do have a uh, a fog gate here, which there is a familiar boss in here. If you have played Dark Souls One, you have faced this guy already. This guy is Old Dragon Slayer, which in the, in um, Dark Souls 1, he was called Ornstein. But the key to beating this guy is to just stay on his left side. And he is not all too hard at all. He's actually easier than Pursuer. You know, you don't want him to uh, back up into those uh, chairs over there. Alright, so when he does this attack, you just want to back up from him. Kind of want to stay in, stay inside the middle of this uh, arena here. Try not to get too uh, tempted to attack him a second time, a third time, and stuff like that. All right, so he does do this uh, long range attack, which you can just back up and dodge pretty easily. There we go. So he does also have a grab attack, which he did not do for us. Old Leo Ring and Old Dragon Slayer Soul. He does have a grab attack that's pretty strong. You just want to keep circling to his uh, left side, and he should not hit you with that at all. Got a couple chests here. Hade Knight Iron Mask and Tower Shield. Then we've got an NPC here, which this guy is, um, what was his name again? Blue Sentinel Target Targray. Um, he is the Blue Sentinel's Covenant uh, guy that you can, he lets you join. But in order to talk to him, in order for him to even talk back to you uh, and allow you to join the Covenant and stuff like that, you do need a token of fidelity, I believe. Which you get those tokens by helping other players in co-op and stuff like that. So uh, if I do get, one, if I do go and yeah, let's let's actually try and get one. We'll we'll turn this game online for just a little bit to uh, try and get this token of fidelity. All right, so uh, we're actually gonna turn this back to uh, online mode, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. So we got a summon here. Claymore. I wonder if I should use that too. I mean, I think I like the Bastard Swords uh, animation a little bit better, but the Claymore is a little bit longer, and it does have this um, this stab animation that I kind of like on it. But uh, we'll see. We'll see if I take the Claymore or not. Singer is dressed. So we got a uh, few guys here. Reapers, hair, air and Phoenix alright hello guys alright let's try not to die you guys saw how easy it was uh, to take on Dragon Slayer alone might be a little bit harder with another uh, another player actually let's just let him uh, come towards you So 
So just kind of uh, keep circling around his uh, around his left. Uh, we missed those attacks. Right, he's gonna throw that. Just kind of circle around him again. Let him come forward a little bit. Alright, that is his grab attack right there. You do not want to stand in front of him when he does that. Because that attack is quite powerful. Alright. So, after you complete... A boss fight like this. Oh, did it show it already? Oh, there we go. Token of Fidelity. So that is what you need in order to um, join the Blue Sentinels Covenant. You at least need one to, to be, be able to join the Covenant. So we're just going to turn this game offline real quick again so we can continue on with our walkthrough. Just wanted to show you guys how to get that. Um, token of fidelity alright so here we are again now that we have the token of fidelity we can talk to Targray here Trans you have there we go proof you are worthy of obtain proof order. that means you got the uh, token of fidelity Join the Blue Sentinels. Yep, we can join them. Remember that joining each covenant does unlock a trophy or achievement for you. So, go ahead and do that. He gives us the Guardian Seal. Um, that is how you use the uh, covenant. But he does give you a gesture, dual bow. And remember, there is a gesture uh, trophy as well. Um, and what else is there about him? He does do the whole Blue Sentinel Covenant kind of like thing, and if you get rank 3 in the Blue Sentinel's Covenant, he will give you his gear, his armor that he's wearing. But if you want that halberd that he has, you have to kill him. I believe that is the only way to get that halberd if you actually want that. Doesn't look that bad, actually. But he does also sell a few things for you. Halberd and Morningstar. Got a few items here. Unlimited bolt stones, so if you want that, and you've got uh, two miracles. We knights of the blue present to test you. All right, so a little bit more about the Blue Sentinels Covenant. Um, in order to join, you have to talk to Targray. Which, in order to jo uh, talk to Targray, you'd need a token of fidelity, which you get from uh, helping other players. There is a way to get it, which I'll show you guys later on when we get to the area about um, the token of fidelity. I believe there's one in game that you can get without talking or without helping anybody. Uh, and in order to rank up this covenant, you actually need to equip the guardian seal here. It automatically summons you to other worlds. Uh, join this covenant, wear this ring, be automatic summoned to the worlds of the blue apostles who have been invaded by dark spirits. Alright, so what, uh, in, ranking up this covenant is, um, you kill the black phantom, the dark spirits, the red phantoms, and stuff like that in another player's world. And uh, that's how you can rank up the, this covenant. Um, and also you can kill, you can use the cracked blue, uh, eye orbs. Where is it? I believe you can also use the cracked blue eye orbs here, uh, invade the world of the guilty, and kill people like that. Also, kill basically sinners. Uh, the blue sentinels will go after sinners. And um, you can also take a match here. There's gonna, if you're playing online, there's going to be an option from these statues where you can use a token of fi I believe you use the token of fidelity to uh, join a dual match. And if you do win the dual match, you get a cracked you get cracked blue eye orbs. I believe you get cracked blue eye orbs, and um, you do rank up for beating other players in this uh, in this matchup thing here too. 
So uh, to, for the rankings, you need 50 kills, 50 uh, wins, and something like that. And you'll get the Spirit Tree Shield. And at rank 2, you need 150 to get Wrath of the Gods, the Miracle Wrath of the Gods, which was very broken in Dark Souls 1. And uh, at rank 3, you need 500 kills and 4 wins uh, to get the Bountiful Sunlight. It's a healing miracle. It's really not worth it at all. I believe you can buy it. I don't remember. But yeah, that is what this covenant is. And so on. Maybe they edited this covenant though. I'm not sure if they did. Because I believe they edited the uh, the 1.03 patch did change something with... Um, had something to do with the Brotherhood of Blood covenant. Which the Brotherhood of Blood covenant is the complete opposite of um, it's the opposite of the blue sentinels covenant they are the red phantoms instead of the blue phantoms but yeah maybe they might have changed and lowered that requirement I believe they lower the requirement of the uh, brotherhood of blood which their default requirement for the brotherhood of blood uh, was exact same as the blue sentinels so I don't know if they changed it or not but anyways, that is the Blue Sentinels Covenant. Back to Hades Tower of Flame. And over on to this side now. Got one more knight here. And you might have saw that uh, summon sign there. I'm gonna grab this item first so you can just run across this little ledge bridge here. Green Blossom. Alright, so there's someone sign here. You can summon Masterless Glencore. So you can come and summon uh, Masterless Glencore and run all the way back to Dragon Slayer and fight him like that too, which I recommend you clear the area before you uh, summon him, or else Glencore here will get pulled by the enemies and start fighting them so you can bring him to fight dragon slayer and uh, you can also use them to fight dragon rider which is this boss right here dragon rider so same thing with dragon slayer uh, you just want to circle to his uh, shielded side let's let uh, Lancor do some uh, attacking uh oh Oh, and you can parry uh, Dragon Rider. You can parry some of his attacks. I believe you cannot parry his uh, shield attack, though. But we're not even gonna we're not even gonna try risking that, since uh, you can't. It's much easier to just to just fight uh, Dragon Rider here by circling around him. There we go. Lancor gets the last hit. All right. Dragon Rider Soul. Thank you very much, Lancor. And then it opens this side. Remember, these uh, these platforms we lifted them with the levers. If you do not lift them, I believe it is just this little platform that I'm running around here. I believe it's just this little one that you have to fight them on. But there is a way of easily doing that as well you can make dragon rider fall off too uh, but he can easily hit you off as well so it's really up to you and we've got an NPC here which I this is um, I can see that you who is it again it. this is Licia Licia of Lindelt Lindelt yeah Lindelt I believe that's how you say it. But she is a cleric girl. She sells this uh, ring of prayer, increased faith, the chime, um, and a few miracles. Lightning spear. If you want to get lightning spear, you get it now. Uh, or you can just talk to her later on also and get it. I believe she is the only one that gives lightning spear. And maybe there's another way to get lightning spear. But I forget. But she does only have one copy. Alright, so in order to make her move to Majula, you just want to go through all of her dialogue. 
until she says this one here. I'll have to move soon. Alright. Then we got a bonfire. And after you go through all of her dialogue, resting at the bonfire will make her move. And she randomly disappeared. Alright. So, coming over here this time. Monastery charm. And these staircases do remind you quite a lot of if you've played Dark Souls 1 of an Orlando. But there is a lot of lore. Ouch. I knew he was going to do that side slash. There's a lot of lore that uh, I do not know about. Which is very interesting. I like those lore videos. Alright, kill those two guys. Human FG and Dark Trotches. Soul of a Proud Knight. Old Knight Halberd. But yeah, about the lore videos. Uh, I've seen a couple of them. Saying this place could be an Orlando. Lord Ron could actually be uh, Drang Lake. Lord Ron was what the... Uh, what the basically the continent was called in uh, the kingdom was called in Dark Souls 1 which in this game it is called Dreng Lake and I've also seen another video where they say um, got a lift here where they do say um, what was it this this uh, Hates Tower of Flame might actually be um, if you knew the lore about one of the one of Gwyn's uh, daughters and Dark Souls One. I forget what her name is. Uh, she did go and marry some flame guy. I forget what his name is, but he actually had no role in Dark Souls One at all. Uh, that's just kind of like lore that FromSoft gave us and we kind of just have to figure out what happened from there. But one of Gwyn's daughters did uh, go go off and marry this uh, flame god. And this place is called Hade's Tower of Flame. It, she did not go and marry Hade. Uh, Hade might not even be a person. Hade might just be the name of this kingdom here. Knight armor. Alright. Hade might just be the name of this area that uh, the guy named it Hade or something like that. Um, but yeah. She did go off and marry. I forget what his name is, but he was considered a sun god. And um, she left an Orlando on her own will to uh, with the sun god guy. But yeah. That is a bit, a little bit of lore, and she might have brought An Orlando's um, uh, creations with her, uh, the way they created things in An Orlando and stuff like that, and created Hades Tower of Flame. That's another bit of lore about um, another way you can think about that. But we've got Lucatiel here. What? I don't know. So you just want to talk to Lucatiel until. Her uh, her dialogue is done. There we go. I believe that is it. Yep. So once you rest at the bonfire here, Lucatiel will disappear. There we go. And we're going back to Majula. But yeah, if you guys are interested in the lore, there are a bunch of people out there uh, talking about the lore of the game. Uh, Honestly, nothing is actually 100% with the lore. That is probably something that uh, From Software wants the community to uh, basically think up of the lore. They'll give you the setup and you think of the ending. That's basically how it is with uh, Dark Souls, which is quite interesting how uh, people think of other things, use proof from the game and uh, and stuff like that as well. But yeah, you can uh, just go and search up those other lore videos. I personally don't do much of the lore thing, but I do look at 
how the lore happened and stuff like that, which is quite interesting. But anyways, we're gonna level up here. Did we pick up? Nope. Oh, we picked up the Sublime Bone Dust. That's what we did. Uh, 15, 15. And we have to actually get intelligence to 8 because there's going to be... Um, we don't have to, but I'm just going to do this for walkthrough purposes. There's going to be a guy in uh, the next area where you need 8 intelligence for him to talk to you. And we're also going to get 8 faith just because there's another guy later on in the game that uh, you need 8 intelligence and 8 faith to talk to him. So it's just for walkthrough purposes. I don't really recommend you do this if you don't really care for uh, all the NPCs. And uh, let's get... Let's try and get Vitality to 15. Uh, we can actually maybe... Nope, not yet. Actually, we can take this off. And let's see if we can... Nope, not that. Yeah, we can actually equip this. So you see, uh, the reason why I'm taking the helm off and using the boots is because this hard leather, it gives a defense bonus of 40... Uh, 40 physical defense for the base, and then the Shrek defense, and slash, and thrust. Uh, it does get 40, 42, and 39, and so on like that. But the drain like leggings give uh, basically more than double, almost triple, uh, what the uh, hard leather boots gives. And then when you look at the infantry helm that I was using earlier, it only gives 38, 40, and 38, which uh, the drain like boots does give uh, more defense than having the helm on. So that's something you can look at. Did we pick up any uh, large Titanite shards? I could actually just look at my inventory, but uh, we're just going to go and talk to him. Nope, we didn't. Uh, we actually bank a few uh, few weapons as well. Oh, and we can burn. Alright, so then we got the Sublime Bone Dust. You can burn this here. It says, cast them into the far fire and Medulla to increase the fire restored with each use of your flask. Alright, so you can only burn Sublime Bone Dust in Majula's Far Fire right here. There's no way to burn it anywhere else. Some force has strengthened your Estus Flask. So now our Estus Flask says plus one. And that is actually the end of Hades' uh, Tower of Flame. So we're actually going to end the video quite soon, but before we end the video, there is an NPC down here now, which is Lysia. Alicia is going to be standing right here. So if you want to talk to her, stuff like that, she is going to give you a new option that you can choose to do, which is to move the path. But we're actually not going to do that just yet, because we're not at that point of the game. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And we're going to go to No Man's Wharf in the next video. And I'll see you guys all later.